leader, the Spanish rider Cito Pons, who is on a Honda. This race, 26 laps, 65 miles, and every inch of those 65 miles is going to be very closely packed. Colin Arms holding up the red flag, about to commence, and that is now. It is an excellent start by Sarrell, but into the lead, it's Cadalora going into the right-hander at Redgate, third gear, building up, you see a colossal bunch of riders, this first corner is always very tricky to get around with riders in front of you, behind you, either side of you, now down through Hollywood and the Craner curves, 130 miles an hour on these 250s, up to the old hairpin from the old hairpin underneath Starkey's Bridge at about 130 miles an hour. There it is, across the course. Then uphill towards McLean's, the fourth gear right-hander, from McLean's down to Coppice. And it looks to me as though Saron is in the lead. It is, it's Dominique Saron. Yeah, Dominique Saron in the lead from Cadillora. Interestingly to see there, Jack Cornu in third, but Donnie McLeod, the British rider, in fourth place in this early stage. And the first lap now, and, and onto the straight, out of Coppies Corner. Very important to get a good drive out of there because of slipstreaming and speed before they break into the chicane. You can see Cadalora having a look there. He doesn't decide to make the move, and it's still Dominic Saron in the lead. Dominic Saron then, sixth in the World Championship, leads on lap one. Long way to go, 26 lap race, down to the Melbourne Loop, round the Melbourne hairpin, and Cadalora takes the lead on the Yamaha V-Twin, the power characteristics of which are said to be more suitable from Donington, a long, long line behind him to the left-hander at Goddard, through to complete lap one as they exit Goddard in third gear, and it's Cadalora leading. It is Saron in second place. It's Cornu in third position. Cito Pons is well up behind. There's Cito Pons just taking Saron. He's fourth. Look at the rider who is fourth now. Number three, Cito Pons and here he is, there he is there is the Spaniard who won in Spain and won in Belgium and Yugoslavia and he's starting his challenge there he is, he's well known for leaving things often until the very last moment but he's up now behind Jacques Cornu who is in third place in the World Championship Cornu is on a Honda, Pons is on a Honda and here he comes up towards the right-hander at McLean's with Saron leading, so it's Honda leading now, Christian Dominique Saron is leading, Cadalora is in second place, Cornu is in third position, Cito Pons is in fourth place, and you can see for yourselves that the rest of them are tightly bunched up behind and now coming down to the S's, look for number three, Cito Pons, it's still Saron, Cadalora, Cornu number nine, Pons number three, and it's very close behind him, too, with Reinhold Roth, the German, coming up, too, on the Honda. This is the Melbourne Loop. This is second gear, 70 miles an hour. Saron, Cadalora. Pons, there's a bit of a gap between the first two. Pons is up into third position. No, it's behind in third position now. It's still Cornu. Cadalora leads. Saron second, Cornu third, Pons fourth. In fifth position, it is Juan Garriga, and behind Garriga in sixth place is Jean-Philippe Rouge on the Yamaha. This is Redgate, and this is lap three. Now, Cadalora is really going for it. Yes, interestingly, uh, the first three machines in practice were the, uh, the V-Twin Yamahas, and the Hondas have dominated the T50CC World Championship this year so far. Um, but here, again, as we saw in the 125cc race earlier, a different manufacturer is having uh, his glory. He's, they've built the, the machine to suit this track, and it's certainly working out very good. Now, this early in the race, it is worth making the point that all the riders are concerned about tyre wear. So grippy is the surface that many of them have not found the limits of their tyre grip. 
and they are all expecting heavy wear after about 10 laps. They were saying after practice that the tyres were starting to go off after 10 laps. Now, this is a 26-lap race, and it could well be that tyre wear will decide who wins the 250cc British Grand Prix. With number seven, Cadalora, the Italian from Modena, which is where the Ferrari comes from, leading as they go round the Melbourne Loop. Watch him get back into the saddle, tuck himself down behind the ferry. Up again as he comes into Goddard's, the long, sweeping, very tight left-hander to complete lap three. Cadalora is making a break for it. In second position, it's still Dominique Saron. Then Cito Pons is in third position. Behind Pons in fourth place on the next Yamaha, it is Garriga. And then behind Garriga, it is Jacques Cornu, who's dropped down through the field a bit. But now the race leader, Cadalora, is pulling away a little. He's got the thick end of one and a half seconds lead, which is a lot in a 250 race. There is Saron, the Frenchman who comes from Clermont-Ferrand in second place. So Saron, sixth in the championship. Cadalora, fifth in the championship. And behind both of them, championship leader, Cito Pons. There he is, number three. Gariga actually took uh, Cito Pons then into the old hairpin. I think Gariga's going to ride this race very aggressively. He's got a very aggressive riding style, as you can see here. He's took down underneath the bubble. He's onto the straight. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him try and make a move um, on Dominique Sarin into the chicane as we go down here. He won't want Cadalora to get away from him. Um, he's lying second in the World Championship, and him and Cadalora are both riding the same machines, and uh, I think Gariga will be out to prove that he can be the best Yamaha. In the background, you see the massive crowd. It's still Saron is second place. There is Gariga making his move, as Roger forecast. Second place, Juan Gariga from Barcelona, the Spanish 250 and endurance champion, goes up to second place now. Ahead of Saron, round Goddard again, the end of lap four, Cadalora, and the gap between Cadalora and Gariga is just over a second. Gariga second into Redgate, behind Gariga in third position now, Christian Saron, and then Pons, and Reinhold Roth is moving up. Reinhold Roth up into fifth place on the yellow Honda. Look for it, there's, there's uh, race leader Cadalora. Now, round the very, very quick stretch at the Craner Curves, into the old hairpin. This is fourth gear. And what a marvellous scrap behind them. Look at this. With Reinhold Roth, there he is, in that batch there. The second of the riders in that batch. He's in sixth position in the race. Ahead of him, on the red machine, with the white sleeves on his leathers, is Jacques Cornu, the Swiss rider. Pons is fourth, Saron is third, and it is still Cadalora leading Gariga. Now, Roger, I notice time and time again, riders stealing a look over their shoulder. How much can you see and how long can you look? Uh, it's not something that I do, actually, and um, on the 500s you get very little time to do it. Um, they shouldn't really, the pit board should tell them all the information they do need to know, but You'll see them looking onto the straight there, as, as I talk, Gariga does take the lead and Cadalora battles back and takes it back again. An interesting line then from Gariga into the uh, Melbourne loop. He went wide on the exit and uh, Cadalora stole the show again, but uh, I'm afraid that's how this race is going to be. Tremendous scrap now between Juan Gariga, number 11, in second place at the moment, and in the lead, Luca Cadalora, with in third position, still Dominique Saron, but it's the two Yamahas making the pace at the front. Now, in the races this year, Hondas have dominated because Anton Mang won in Japan, Felice won in America, then Pons won in Spain, and look at the way now, Cadalora is easing away a little from Gariga. Then we had the first Yamaha victory in Portugal, another one in West Germany, another one in Holland, but Jack Cornu, who is currently in fifth position, won the last 
250cc race before this one, the French Grand Prix. And as the leaders exit, there's a battle developing well and truly for third position. It's held at the present moment by Dominique Saron, number four. Ben Cito Pons, the world championship leader behind Pons. And coming up fast, the bald-headed German, Reinhold Roth, who looks much older than his 35 years. And it's one, two, three, four, five riders virtually together. Here's the lead. This is Canelora. 11 is Garriga. Three is Pons. Cito Pons in third position. So Yamaha leads. Yamaha second. Honda in third position. Number four is Dominique Sarrell. Number two is Reinhold Roth. Behind Reinhold Roth is Ruggia. Look for number 17, Jean-Philippe Roger. And down goes... That's Manfred Hervé. That's the second British Grand Prix that we've seen him fall off on years ago. He fell off at Silverstone in the lead. Did a tremendous wheelie as he approached Woodcote and went Woodcote and went out of the race as he has done here at Donington. And as you can see, Manfred Hervé, the German who's fallen off his Yamaha, is perfectly OK. And that is another compliment to the safety at Donington as on lap seven out of 26, L Luca Cadalora from Modena, the ex-Italian junior champion riding the works Yamaha V-Twin, the world champion in the 125 class in 1986, leads Garriga. Now, there are the leaders. Here is a replay, and look for number 19, Casoli, Paolo Casoli on the Garelli. There he goes, he's lost the back, he slides across the circuit. The bike goes ahead of him, and that's fortunate for him. They both hit the concrete curbing. The grass means that there is nothing for them to hammer into, and Casoli off the Garelli and out of the race, and already the marshals are there to help him. I can only think that his machine uh, seized up then, Murray, because the back end came round on the approach to the corner. It would be too early for him to have the power on, so I can only think that the machine actually seized up, locked the rear wheel, and obviously caused him to lose control. And as we can see at the Melbourne Loop, Catalora is still leading from Gariga. Cito Pons now looks to be getting away a little bit in third place from Dominique Saron, and it looks like Roth's got up to fifth place and challenging Saron for fourth. And as I, say, as I talk, he's going alongside him, but here we are, Catalora in the lead, uh, completing yet another lap. And so, number seven, Luca Cadalora, the one, the man who won the West German Grand Prix, leads number 11, Juan Garriga, who won in Portugal and in Holland. And now, here they come, Cadalora, Garriga. Then behind Garriga is Cito Pons. Look for the, there he is. There is the man who's leading the World Championship. Cito Pons, the Spaniard, on the Honda. Behind Pons is Christian Saron, the Frenchman. Dominique Saron, the Frenchman. Out from Starkey's, up to McLean's. It's Reinhold Roth on the left, who is in fifth position, the German. Ahead of him is Dominique Saron. And the gap between Cadalora leading and Garriga is still less than a second. The fastest man on the course, however, at the present moment is Juan Garriga on the V-twin Yamaha. He's gone round in 1 minute 38.8. That compares with the lap record held by Martin Wimmer before, 1 minute 42.3. That's how much quicker they're going. That's 91 miles an hour, the new lap record, and the previous lap record was just a whisker under 88 miles an hour. So, thanks to primarily this new surface, they're lapping three miles an hour faster than they did last year, and that is a tremendous increase. It certainly is, and um, I feel a lot of that's got to be down to the actual resurfacement from Donington Park. It has this new asphalt on it, um, as I said, was done in February of this year, and it's really proved to be a favour with the majority of the riders. In fact, some riders are complaining they can't adapt the normal techniques of riding and spinning the rear wheel because there is actually too much grip on the, on the surface. Um, Tony Mang, the current world champion, obviously not in this race. Murray, he's out, um, injured himself in Yugoslavia, broke his collarbone, and we don't see the world championship rider at the moment.
but watch Sito Pons, he's making his move in third position there. Sito Pons, the world championship leader on the Honda, 27 years old, the man from Barcelona, is making his move, he's closing up on Juan Garriga on the Yamaha, who is in second place, number 11, and Cadalora, Luca Cadalora on another Yamaha, who is leading, and if Garriga's fastest lap time isn't broken by Sito Pons this lap I will be very surprised they're going down now into the S's second gear these are the first three Cadalora, Garriga and this man Sito Pons in third position it is still Dominique Saro in fourth position in fifth position it is Reinhold Roth and in sixth position it's Jean-Philippe Ruja into Redgate Melbourne, this is the hairpin at Melbourne. The leaders well round now. And here they are. Cadillora, Gariga, Pons. That's how close it is as they go into Red Redgate on lap 10 at about 95 miles an hour. Four tenths of a second between the first two. And between the first three, there is under a second. Absolutely on the limits of adhesion. When and how do you start the field tyres going, Roger, if they're wearing? I'm sure that um, on the initial laps they would feel the tyres actually moving around. Um, these machines have so much power nowadays, they can actually spin the rear wheels and the riders can actually use the throttle to control that and to actually steer the machine from the back wheel. They can actually slide the back wheel sideways, keep the knee on the road, as you can see there now, Cito Ponzi's knee is actually touching the road. He can turn the throttle, move the back wheel and actually steer the, the machine from the rear wheel. Um, Donnie McLeod is down in 13th place. Um, I can only think that he's got some machine problem. He was up in fourth place on the first lap and qualified much stronger than that, so I can only think that he's developed some problems. As they come out of the S's there, Cadalora, still leading from Gariga, Cito Pons, Dominic Sarr and Roth. And um, here we are, Cadalora back into the Melbourne loop. Gariga seems to close on him there a little bit on the brakes. I tend to think Gariga's got a little bit in hand at this stage, Murray. He does actually close on the brakes, and that's a, proving a point to me that he's probably just hanging in there. He probably doesn't know that Cito Pons is right on his back wheel. And obviously that's where the real scrap lies between Gariga and Sito Pons. Well, he's going to know pretty soon because Pons is closing as they come up to Redgate and as Cadalora eases away, I think we're going to have a monumental scrap. There it is for second place between Juan Gariga, the Spaniard, and Sito Pons, his countryman. And Pons is going for it and through! Well, what about that, Roger? That was incredible. Gariga went up on the curb a little bit, coming out of Redgate, lost a little bit of drive as he wouldn't find the adhesion out there on the curb. Sito Pons took advantage, tried to go around the outside, but it's a long, long way around the outside through Craner curbs, and Gariga moved back through. But uh, on the approach to McLean's, Gariga still has the advantage. These two fighting can allow Cadalora to get away a little bit, but the main pro point here is that the scrap for the World Championship lead is between these two guys, number 11, Juan Gariga, and number three, Sito Pons. And it's going to go all the way to the end of the race, as it's really done in all the previous Grand Prix. It's going to go all the way to the end of the year, the way they're going at the present moment. Down to the S's, eight points between them. Cadalora leads, Gariga second, Pons third, appropriately number three. Two Yamahas, V-Twins, leading the V-Twin Honda of Sito Pons, who's right in the slipstream of Gariga, drops back at the Melbourne Loop. There was some uh, oil drop there earlier, but it seems to have been cleared up and no problem as they take the natural line to get round the corner as quickly as possible and to exit Goddard shortly at the end of the 11th lap in this 26 lap, 65.3 miles race and the fastest man still, notwithstanding that tremendous spurt by Pons, Sito Pons is Juan Garriga, number 11 on the Yamaha V-Twin who has shattered the lap record 1 minute 38.8, 91.02 miles an hour, or if you would rather have it, 146.5 kilometres. Gariga, Pons. And look at the way they heal the bikes over the 
contour of the tyre is such that there is grip when they can heel the bike over at the most incredible angles. You see them put their knees out and they actually have sliders on the knees of the leathers to allow the knee to touch the ground and to roll up, to slide along the tarmac without hurting them. And there's Pons. Pons looks to me to be well positioned now to try to take Gariga as they come up to Coppice and onto the fastest part of the course, the stretch between Coppice and the S's, where they'll be doing nearly 140 miles an hour. Roger, when you are riding as closely to another rider as that, you must surely have complete trust in him. Well, um, all of the riders, obviously, in the World Championship are professionals. Anybody can make a mistake, a mistake there. Everyone's human. And as you saw then, Juan Gariga into the S's, went a little bit wide. Cito Pons tried to take the advantage underneath him again, but these two are going hammer and nail, and uh, neither of them will give in. And I think it's going to allow Catalora to escape, as we're seeing now. He's lead is now extended to nearly two seconds um, over Gariga but I don't think these two will be too too worried I think the real battle as I've said is between Juan Gariga and Cito Pons number three the fuel load is obviously getting lighter as the race goes on the Honda does handle better I know with less fuel in the tank so it may be that Cito Pons is sitting there waiting for the end of the race to come nearer and nearer and then he will use his advantage of a lighter fuel load to actually take over Juan Gariga there is Pons behind Catalora, Gariga and Pons, the three that you're looking at now. In fourth position, it is Dominique Saron, the Frenchman, on the Honda. Fifth is Reinhold Roth, the West German, on another Honda. Then in sixth position, it is the it is Juan Philippe Perugia. That is Roth on the left. In seventh position, Jacques Cornu, who has won Grand Prix this year. Eighth is Carlos Lovado, the double X world champion. In ninth position, it's the Japanese rider Masahiro Shimizu. In 11th place, it is Ivan Palazzesi, the Venezuelan. And in 12th position, Britain's Donny McLeod on the EFC, who, as Roger has said, is not sadly doing as well in the race as he did in practice. But look at this for a race. Pons, number three, in third place. Number 11, Gariga on the Yamaha in second place. Ahead of both of them is Cadalora, taking advantage of the fact that the battle for second and third is enabling him to break away. Coming through to complete lap 13, which is half distance. And the gap now between Cadalora in the lead and Pons in third position is 2.7 seconds. This is Redgate. Saron is some three seconds in fourth place behind Pons, who is third, and about uh, half a second ahead of Reinhold Roth, who is in fifth position. Then Ruger in sixth position is half a second behind Roth. Jack Cornu, who is seventh, is another second further behind. So Pons is going again as they come up towards McLean's closes right up on the rear wheel of Gariga's Yamaha, which really did look a bit empty to me there. I think uh, Gariga's starting to snake the back end a little bit, but then it's his riding style. Um, as I said earlier, he's, he's got a very erratic riding style. Cito Pons is much smoother. You can see Cito Pons now pulling out of Gariga's slipstream. He's got the advantage down to the S's, but I think Gariga will try again. He's tried it. Yes, indeed, he's come through on the inside, and that's the way Gariga rides. I'm afraid he's going to go all the way to the flag like that. Cito Pons has got a real battle on his hands here, and, uh, you know, I really wouldn't like to be in his shoes. Gariga has got a, a reputation amongst the other riders as being very hard. He'll push you around, he'll push you off the track. And as you saw then, Cito Pons looked to have a clear advantage into the S's. In fact, Cito's shaking his hand at Gariga. Is he annoyed with him for that manoeuvre? Well, who knows? I should think he's absolutely livid. In the meantime, the leader goes across the line with Gariga second. Now the gap between Cadalora, the leader, and, and Pons is 3.36 seconds. And Pons must be absolutely fuming. I have little doubt in my mind that if he could get past Gariga, he could get away from him. But as Rogers pointed out, and now look at this. This is absolutely on the absolute limit through the Craner curves. Look how far they've pushed the bikes over. 
The problem here, of course, Murray, is that these uh, two can actually forget about what they're actually battling for here, and that is the lead in the World Championship, the World 250cc Championship, and they can actually let their adrenaline take over here and push themselves right to the limit, in fact, perhaps over the limit, and one of them may crash, but I'd, I'd hate to see that because uh, this is going to be a real hectic scrap and it's going to be fantastic on the last lap. This is lap 15. This is the battle between number 11, Juan Garriga, on the Yamaha and Pons and Gariga looks over and says how do you like that Pons and Pons doesn't like it at all and he's going to go through and take second position and he does it Cito Pons this time has taken second position where Gariga retook it from him on the previous lap now can Cito Pons with in the background Dominique Saron closing up on number 11 Gariga do anything about the lead Cito Pons and Cadalora still leading there's Cadalora going up towards Goddard, into the left-hander now. And watch to Christian Sarrell. I'm going to take the gap now between the leader, Cadalora, and Cito Pons, who is in second place as they cross the line. The gap is four seconds. It was two, then it was three, but that was when Cito Pons was in third position. Now he is second and trying to put distance between himself and Gariga, who is being caught most very definitely by Dominique Sarrell. Look for the Sarrell, there he is. As I mentioned, Murray, the fuel load gets, once the fuel load get, does get lighter on the Honda machines of Cito Pons and Dominique Sarrell, they tend to be able to pile on the coals a little bit because the machines do handle better. And uh, most of the fast laps in training, of course, are set with a light fuel load and they start these races obviously with a full tank and as the race goes on the fuel load does get lighter but Cito Pons definitely tends to be stretching his advantage from Gariga but I don't think we've seen the end of Gariga yet 90 horsepower these machines weigh some se se no, 75 horsepower and up to us now they come Pons in second position there is Gariga and the danger man for both of them is Dominique Saron, number four on the Honda, the Frenchman, the brother of Christian. He's been riding in Grand Prix for three years. He's won three races. Dominique Saron behind these two. And there he is. There's the little Frenchman. Tremendously gritty rider, like his brother who's in the 500cc race. And then... Pons, Gariga. And Saron too has got Reinhold Roth behind him. Behind Reinhold Roth and catching him fast is Ruja. So as you look at Saron, there is Reinhold Roth who is in fifth position. And behind him, Ruja, number 17, Jean-Philippe Ruja on a Yamaha. So it's Cadalora on a Yamaha leading. Pons on a Honda in second place. In third place, Gariga on a Yamaha. Fourth is Saro on a Honda. Fifth is Roth on a Honda. And sixth is Ruja on a Yamaha. So the honours are just about evenly split. Yes, sadly, we've just seen uh, Rob Orm, one of our British riders, go into the pits. It's perfectly all right. Some machine failure there. Aceto Pons, Gariga and Dominic Sound lifting the front wheel there. He's obviously got a, um, uh, a very... Oh, he's catching on Gariga there. He's Gariga in problem, he's having problems. And um, Cito Pons is tending to edge away now. And I think Dominic Saran maybe will get held up unless the power of the Honda can... And it has done. He's gone past Gariga on the approach to the S's. And Gariga's coming back through. No, Dominic Saran shuts the door on him. And I think that's Cito Pons in a firm second place here now. Um, unless Dominic Saran can, of course, challenge him. But, of course... Both being on Honda machinery, that although there are no team tactics, Cito Pons will want to have the advantage for his World Championship points. Well, the Burnett prophecy has turned out to be true, unsurprisingly, and as the fuel load comes down, the Hondas go faster. Up into third place, number four, Chris, uh, Dominique Saron over the line. There is Cadalora. Now over the line, there is Cito, is Pons. Then up into third position has come Dominique Saron, that's number four, and down to fourth place on the blue Yamaha, Gariga, who was second for so much of the race, indeed from lap four right through to and including lap 14. We're on lap 18, 26 lap race. Now, Dominique Saron, the, the short, 
quiet, fair Frenchman. Three times winner of the world famous 24 hour race, the Bol d'Or in France. Third in the American Grand Prix this year, the winner of the Italian Grand Prix. And Saron is sixth in the World Championship, so he is after points. He's at the present moment on 13 points for the position that he's in. And Cadalora comes towards us now. So here is Luca Cadalora, who has led from lap one, and now the battle for second. Look at it. Pons has been caught by Saron. So the Spaniard, number three on the Honda, is right with the Frenchman, number four, Dominique Saron on a Honda. And the difference in World Championship points between second and third places is two. 17 for, for second place, 15 for third position. Up over the crest. And Gariga is fighting back. Pons second, number three. We're into lap 19 now. Not really hot enough, I guess, Roger, to worry the riders. No, the temperature conditions, I would imagine, are ideal. We have a slight breeze blowing, which um, will keep the engines cool, keep the riders cool. We now, with our protective leather suits, have perforations in the front of them um, to, keep the, to keep the cool wind blowing through them and out of the back. We're watching now Cito Pons and Dominique Saron. Has he gone through? No. Watch Dicing for second place here. And uh, I must tell you that I watched the Grand Prix in Assen in Holland. And these two are Dicing for the lead. And on the very last corner brought each other down. So obviously both riding the same machines, but no team orders whatsoever here. And Mr. Gariga in the background, number 11 in fourth position, who was second for so long will probably in the nicest possible way hope they do the same thing again without hurting each other as Cadalora comes down into the S's. Now, is this Saron's chance? It is. It is. Up into second place goes Dominique Saron, nips through on the left-hander of the S's, winds it up, gets a mini wheel, wheelie as the front wheel comes momentarily off the ground. Breaking hard now for the right-hander of Melbourne Hairpin, second gear, 70 miles an hour, second, third and fourth. The new second place man, Dominique Saron, Honda. The new third place man, number three, who was third for a long time before, Cito Pons and Gariga is coming back in fourth position on the Yamaha. So it's a Yamaha leading, Honda second, Honda third, Yamaha fourth in fifth position. Reinhold Roth is some four seconds behind this battle on his Honda. In sixth position, it's Ruja, who is another second behind Roth. Seventh is Cornu, eighth is Lovado, ninth is Shimizu, tenth is McLeod, eleventh is Palazzesi, and in twelfth position, Carlos Cardus. Fastest lap of the race so far, Gariga, who is number 11, fourth. And Gariga now is pushing Pons and takes the third position. Oh! How's that? You, you, you got past me, and now I've got past you. So try that for size. I think actually, Marie Gariga was apologising. He went in a little bit too quick into the old hairpin. He couldn't get the machine stopped, and rather than lose control, stuffed it up the inside of Cito Pons and actually moved Cito Pons out. I think it was an apology, which is a very rare thing coming from Juan Gariga. I start staying corrected. We all make mistakes. And Cito Pons now, I think he's had enough of the pleasantries and the nice manners. He's, he's going for it. Third place. Gariga's got it at the moment, number 11 on the Yamaha. Very similar designs. Where are you, Cito? He looks back. Didn't have to look very far because Cito was right behind him. Donnie McLeod, incidentally, is in 10th position, the British rider on the EMC, who did so well in the West German Grand Prix by finishing in fourth place on his EMC. And we're now on lap 21 in this 26-lap race with Cadalora leading Saron by some five seconds. That's Saron on the right of your screen, Dominique Saron on the Honda. There's Gariga, there's Pons. And the, the World Championship gap between Pons, who is leading the championship, and Gariga, who is second, is eight points. 
So Pons will be desperately anxious to get ahead of Juan Garriga. There they are, that's Garriga on the blue Yamaha. And the personable Cito Pons, who's well known for leaving things until the last minute. But that's when he's battling for the lead. At the present moment, he's battling for third position and those vital World Championship points at the end of the British Grand Prix here at Donington. Hello, there's Pons going for it. And he's through. Pons has retaken the third position, but Garriga's on the inside and immediately retakes it as they go into the S's. They heel over together. And as they drop down to the Melbourne hairpin, this gives me the opportunity to tell you that after this race, there are still four 250 Grand Prix to go. Sweden, Czechoslovakia, Brazil and Argentina so points are absolutely vital to both Pons, who is the second of these two riders, and Garriga, who looks on the wrong side, he looks on the left and Pons is on the right, into Goddard, Cadalora is into his 22nd lap. Here he is into Redgate, here is Luca Cadalora. And Cadalora's uh, best ride so far this year was in West Germany, where he won. Apart from that, he hasn't been on the podium because his best other place was in Yugoslavia, where he was in fourth position. So this will be a tremendous fillip to his world championship chances. Cadalora's in fifth place in the world championship at the moment. Well, there goes Saron, you saw him. And here come Garriga and Pons for that third position. The crowd, as you, as you can see, is absolutely enormous. It's growing by the minute. They were queuing very, very early this morning for an hour and a half to get into Donington. So popular is the venue. And coming towards us now, number four in second place, Saron. Third, number 11, Garriga, Yamaha. On the right is number three, Sito Pons, Yamaha. And this time, Garriga is having no nonsense about Pons slipping through on the inside. He calmly closes the door, looks over his shoulder, or looks alongside his thigh, to be more accurate about it, to see where the Spaniard is. And Sito says, I'm right behind you, sunshine. Make a false move and I'll be through. Up to Goddard. 22 laps almost completed by these two and Roger what can you do so if you were Cito Pons in this situation and you knew you were fourth and leading the world championship what would be your tactics it's obviously a difficult position to be in um, he's got to really stick behind Gariga and make a last lap effort I feel I don't think um, he's going to be able to pass him and break away at this late stage in the race with just four laps to go he may be able to make the best possible use of some back markers that they come up against. Lapping slower riders can often cause a, a colossal difference in championship positions and race positions. Um, as we've seen, Dorica still battling around the old herpin in front of Cito Pons. But uh, I think another interesting point here in this race now is that Christian Dominique Saron is catching Cadalora, and he's now got the gap down to five seconds. Is Cadalora got tyre problems? Um, has he got any mechanical problems? But Dominic Saron is definitely catching. As we watch the battle for third. Now, there is Luca Cadalora, who has just lapped Hans Lindner. There is Dominic Saron in second place going into the S's. There is the battle for third, and it is indeed getting very close. In fact, they are closing up with Gariga third, Pons fourth. The gap between Cadalor and the leader and Pons in fourth place was nine seconds at the end of the previous lap. Now, it looks considerably less than that to me. I'll take a check at the moment because the leader is coming up to Goddard. The leader is round Goddard. The leader is over the line now as Gariga and Pons go through. Now, the gap as Cito Pons completes the lap is nine seconds very 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 misleading 9.4 seconds it looked like less than that that's Saron in second place now we'll see soon how we just saw Gariga and Pons there is Saron and there are Gariga and Pons that is all the gap between 
second and third and in terms of time it is 2.9 seconds third and fourth are definitely catching Sarong in second place Gariga has, has still got the fastest lap 1 minute 38.9 91 miles an hour as near as makes no difference 91.02 which is an increase of three miles an hour on the previous lap record. 6.5 seconds now between Cadalora and Sarong, who is in second position, as Cito Pons takes, does he? Yes, he does. Juan Garriga and third position in the process. Now, it could well be that this is where Pons is going to pile on the speed. Yeah, as I said, Marie, you'll see um, in the picture I've noticed some slower riders that they're approaching. Perhaps Cito Pons has actually seen these and wants to be in the lead to try and take the best advantage of them. Um, they're now going up. You can see them in front now. There are some slower riders that they are catching, and these next two laps are going to be also important. And I think Cito Pons really wants to be in front to take best advantage. And these two laps are the last two laps because they're on lap 25 now in this 26-lap race. I can't see anything d disturbing Cadalora's lead unless he has a machine problem in the closing stages with Saron some seven seconds behind him. But Pons might just conceivably catch Saron. He's very close indeed in terms of time. There is Cito Pons, who's got ahead of Gariga, and he's pulling away from Gariga. Number three in third place. Cito Pons definitely pulling away from Gariga in fourth place. And there is Chris, there is Dominique Sarron. Here's Pons. Third position, Gariga behind him. For the record, Roth is still fifth, Ruja is still sixth, Cornu is still seventh, Lovado is eighth, Shimizu is ninth. Here is the leader, Luca Cadalora just about to start very shortly when he has gone round the Melbourne hairpin and Goddard his last lap and Saron has gone through there's Pons and Gariga coming up to lap a tail ender this is where it becomes all important to make best advantage of these slower riders you can see then Cito Pons has got by one I think Gariga's going to get him no problem yes he's taking the inside line push the back marker wide and uh, he's lucky to get through there and as they come round now to start this their last lap um, again the back markers are going to come into play well the leader Cadalora is well away but the gap now between second and third between number four Saron and number three Pons is down to under two seconds but there was, there is Cito Pons in third position and this is the last lap. There's no, not going to be any problem over who wins this race. The problem is going to be who finishes second. There is Saron, Dominique Saron, the Frenchman on the Honda, being caught, caught, caught by number three, Cito Pons, who has got behind him number 11, Juan Garriga, on the Yamaha. Yamaha leads Honda second and third, Yamaha fourth. The Honda of Reinhold Roth is fifth, and Ruggio's Yamaha is in sixth place. Three Yamahas, three Hondas in the first six places. And here's Cadalora. Number seven, Luca Cadalora, in the closing stages of the last lap. There is Sarol, there is Pons, there is Gariga. First, second, third, Pons looks back. Gariga is right behind him. But Pons is really going to have to motor to catch Sarol, never mind get past him, but he is definitely closing up. And this is the last lap. They're through the S's. They go down to the Melbourne loop. Sarol, Pons, Gariga, second, third, fourth, and Gariga's going to make a dash for third on the, in, the, in the last corner. He's through. Juan Gariga has taken Cito Pons in third place at the last major corner. They sprint up to Goddard. And Luca Cadalora comes out of Goddard to win the 250cc British Grand Prix. In second place, it is across the line. In second place goes Saron. Third is Gariga. And fourth is Cito Pons. A terrific finish to the 250 British Grand Prix here at Donington. Reinhold Roth finishes in fifth position. And in sixth place, Jean-Philippe Rougier. Ha! <laughs> After that, I'm breathless. Obviously, it was Luca Cadalora's race. We, we tended to, to 
from time to time, concentrate on the battle behind, but here is the man who dominated the race all the way. Luca Calalora drove a brilliant race. He led from the start. He never looked like being challenged. Um, Cito Pons and Garriga were having their private little battle for the World Championship lead. And I think uh, Catalora and Dominic Saran took advantage of that and rode their own races to finish first and second respectively. Um, as I predicted, the race would go all the way to the flag between Garriga and Pons, and it couldn't have been more exciting. Victory in the 1988 Shell Oils 250cc British Grand Prix to Luca Cadalora on his Yamaha, ahead of Dominique Saron's Honda and Juan Garriga's Yamaha. In fourth position, Cito Pons, the world championship leader, and in fifth place, Reinhold Roth, ahead of Jean-Philippe Ruggia, and that means to say that Garriga will be just that much closer to Pons in the World Championship with four rounds to go. Six points separate, Pons leading the World Championship, Garriga in second. Jack Cornu in third position, well ahead of Reinhold Roth, but the World Championship is going down to the wire between the Spaniard Cito Pons and his countryman Juan Garriga.